Greetings Internet and welcome back to Keats Universe. So I thought I would resume my activism vlogs by going back to basics. And when I say basics, I mean going back to more familiar territory. When I first started partaking in online activism, the first kinds of videos I did of that variety were of the LGBTQ variety. So a video I made way back when, in the good old days of the early 2000s, was surrounding around the topic of homosexuality and why, in my view, it is natural and very much a part of human nature. As a matter of fact, I don't just claim it's part of human nature, but I go a step further and say that homosexuality and indeed bisexuality is part of all animal nature. So the aim of this video is to prove with science that homosexuality is far from a choice, it is far from unnatural, and it is something very, very real and exists very much so in nature. Also, as a side note, I do appreciate that this video is going to be quite lengthy, so for your own benefit, there is going to be an index source down below in the description area, so if there are certain aspects of this topic that you're more particularly interested in, please check out the index down below in the description box. Before we even look at the evidence, the research and the studies of homosexuality within nature, it is very important for us to define what is meant by the word natural in the sense that we are using it in this conversation as the entire idea of this video is to debunk the idea that homosexuality is unnatural. So the simplest definition and understanding of the word natural in this sense is something that is existing in or caused by nature, not made or caused by humankind. Based on what we see within humanity and other animal species, homosexuality and indeed all sexualities fit this very criteria. Research shows and concludes, and I'll be linking sources of these in the description down below. This data shows that homosexuality or same-sex relations or tendencies to be present in almost thousands of different species. However, some researchers claim that homosexuality is practiced even closer to 1,500 different animal species. While the exact number is not entirely clear to illustrate just how widespread homosexuality is practiced amongst the animal kingdom, it is clear from source after source, research after research, study after study, that homosexuality is still nonetheless very present within the animal kingdom and still very widespread. It is a common viewpoint amongst many scientific professions who have studied sexuality that what we see in other species allows us to learn so much of ourselves. There is a very insightful post over on psychologytoday.com entitled not so different, finding human nature in animal nature, which is basically a book plug for the book of the same title written by biologist Mayton Lentz. Anyhow, the article outlines many similarities between human beings and other animal species in regard to our behaviors, our various emotional journeys that they and we all Partake in. I very much recommend checking that book out and while we are on the subject of reading material recommendations I also equally recommend that you check out Gay, Straight and the Reason Why by Simon LaVey. It is an excellent book which I have read myself. It gives a great in-depth scientific explanation to understanding sexuality from a human perspective and an other non-human animal perspective as well. It is unfortunate that even to this very day there are still individuals who like to think of human beings or refer to human beings as if we are separate from other animal species or not animals at all. It couldn't be further from the truth. While human beings have certainly taken a different evolutionary journey, that does not erase the fact that we are still an animal. It is a simple fact of biology that human beings are simply an animal species, and it's quite baffling that this is even a conversation of debate anymore. Despite our differences, all credible scientists agree that in comparison from human beings to other animal species that we all 
still inhabit the same primal forms of instinct. Along with our needs of warmth, nourishment, sexual urges, sexual drives, this also includes the need and the desire to love. We are not the only animals that love one another. We are not the only ones who care for our mates or for our children. I couldn't agree more. Of course, the animal studies are not the only important factor to take into account in regards to homosexuality within nature. Another very crucial study in regards to homosexuality in nature, as Richard Dawkins himself puts it. But for anything, it doesn't have to be homosexuality, for height or weight or musical ability, anything you like, and you find that identical twins, monozygotic twins, are more like each other than non-identical twins, significantly more like each other, then that suggests that the characteristic concerned is heritable. Indeed, and the characteristic in concern here is homosexuality. In fact, the University of Hawaii's website includes a very detailed report on 61 pairs of twins and three sets of triplets. This is more commonly referred to as the twins study. This study confirms just what Dawkins was claiming, that when it comes to twin studies, when we take into consideration the gathered information and statistics, that homosexuality can be and is heritable. And if it is heritable, that means it is present in nature. And if it's present in nature, that makes it natural. The study shows that 38 pairs of monozygotic twins, 34 male pairs and 4 female pairs, were found to have a concordance rate of 65.8% for homosexual orientation. So I've already discussed homosexuality being observed amongst countless of different animal species. However, it should be noted that such behavior is not limited to intimacy. But it has been observed that occurrences of co-parenting amongst animals of the same sex have in fact occurred. In fact, there is an albatross colony in Hawaii, because apparently all good things come from Hawaii, in this colony, around 30% of couples who come together to raise a chick are raised by two unrelated females. This was determined by monitoring the colony over a period of 10 years and subsequently reported in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B. That very report itself is linked down below. Granted, it should be noted that this particular case is a case in regards to an adaptive advantage. But in saying that, it is still very important to acknowledge that same-sex parenting is something that does in fact occur outside of humanity. And plus, from an evolutionary point of view, it makes sense. After all, adaption is a very crucial component of evolution. But there is also the case of back in 2019, a case concerning two male penguins in a zoo in Berlin who adopted a baby penguin. Skip and Ping are both male, they're a couple, and now they've been given an egg. So as you can see from that clip, Skip and Ping who are a couple, have just been given a penguin egg. The two male penguins had displayed some very obvious behavior illustrating that they really, really desired to have children. And the moment they were given the egg, they knew exactly how to take care of the unborn child in regards to the natural incubation method. And if you want to know more about that story, the link, of course, is down below in the description area. The last aspect in reference to homosexuality within nature is possibly one of the more misunderstood aspects, and that is the arguments from genes. It has been determined that while there is no one single gene that can determine one's sexuality either way, there are still certain aspects that may contribute to one's sexuality. For example, epigenetics is one of the ways in which genes can come into play in regards to understanding our sexuality. To paraphrase from Dr. James O'Keefe, and I'll be linking his TED Talks down below, our epigenetics is regarded as our genetic software. We have many DNA programs downloaded onto our DNA, but epigenetics chooses which one is best suited for the environment. 
A recent groundbreaking study from UCLA found that by looking at a group of men, some gay, some straight, and looking at epigenetic tags in nine different sites, they could predict with 70% accuracy their sexual orientation. Yes, Dr. O'Keefe is correct. There was a study just a few years ago that determined just that. If you would like to know more information about that UCLA study, there is a link down below to an article to give you much more information and in-depth analysis to what exactly that study entailed. While there is still quite a lot to be known about epigenetics, especially in terms of its role with understanding sexuality, but it seems to me that based on what we know now, it can teach us a lot about homosexuality and sexuality in general. And I think as we start to fit more pieces of the puzzle into place, we're going to find out so much more about sexuality with the power of epigenetics. So, in conclusion, homosexuality is natural and it is and has always been present in nature, as the evidence shows. It is a very crucial part of one's biology. Experience in your body, um, which contains, you know, which begs um, the question of, you know, why are we criminalizing biology? Yes, Dr. Mukherjee is very correct. Discriminating against homosexuals is no different from discriminating against one's biology and makes very little sense to do so. So everyone, that is my video on why homosexuality is natural. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. If you feel there is something I have missed or neglected to bring up, by all means go to the comments area and post me a comment. Alternatively, if you would like to leave a video response, just upload a video to YouTube addressing the issues that you may have had or perhaps you want to agree with me and talk about the topics and issues I've raised here that you agree with. If so, pop that into a video, upload it to YouTube and include the hashtag or E underscore natural gay. And until next time everyone, freedom, peace and love. Thanks for watching guys.